In this video, we're going to complete example three. We're going to sketch the graph of 2y plus 6x equals 10. And I want to remind you of a formula we introduced in an earlier video, y equals mx plus b. Now, this formula is called the gradient intercept formula. So why do we call it the gradient intercept formula? Well, the reason we do that is because it has prime numerals that stand for gradient and the y-intercept. The m stands for gradient and the b stands for the y-intercept. Now looking at example 3, our formula looks really different to the gradient intercept formula. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to rearrange it so it looks similar. So we'll write it down first, 2y plus 6x equals 10. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 6x on both sides. That's going to cancel out the 6x on the left and put it on the right. And soon you'll see why. This will give me negative 6x plus 10. I've specifically put it in that order for a reason. I wanted my 6x to be on the left side of the 10. Now, if I write my gradient intercept formula below this, you will notice that our two formulas are starting to match. Our y matches with the y in the formula. Our x matches with the x, and our 10 matches with the b. Now, it's not quite right because our formula has 2y, and we want it to have y on its own. So we can fix that. What we're going to do is we're going to divide 2y by 2, as well as the 10, and as well as the negative 6x. Everything needs to be divided by 2. This will get rid of the 2, giving us y equals negative 3x plus 5. Now we've got a really good formula because it matches the gradient intercept formula exactly. y equals mx plus b. We can see that m must equal negative 3, since the negative 3 lines up with the m, and the b must equal 5 or positive 5, since the 5 and the b match up. Once we have this information, it becomes quite easy to draw our graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little marker at the 5, like so. And the reason I've done that is b tells us our y-intercept like so, which means that our graph is going to cross the y-axis at the point 5. We also know that our gradient is negative 3. What that means is that every time I step 1 to the right, I'm actually going to go 1, 2, 3 squares down. It's going down because it's a negative. Right? If it was a positive, it would be going up three steps. So we'll do that now. The next point I'm going to do is here. And all I did is I went right one step, down three steps. And I'm going to keep doing that. Right one step, one, two, three, down steps. Right one step, one, two, three, down steps. Okay. We can now draw our graph with a line. So you want your line to pass through all your points, like so. And you also want your line to have arrows at both ends. And the reason we put arrows in is to show that the line can go on forever in both directions. Anyway, that concludes example three. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.